Okay, so I assume everybody can see the screen. Uh, I haven't heard otherwise. Um, I did this presentation as uh, part of a uh, classroom presentation for the Aries group last month. Uh, it was my turn. And uh, John asked me to do it for the club, so I said, sure. And what this is, is that this is a um, kind of a primer or a, um, and a sharing of experience uh, based on the events that I've worked over the various years. Um, I've, as some of you know, I came from Texas. I worked with uh, the uh, Garland Amateur Radio Club there. I was a member there and did quite a few um, public service events through there in different uh, environments. Some were easy, some were difficult, uh, some were very stressful. And uh, these are some of the things that I've learned over the years and also gathered uh, from information from others and what's, uh, what kind of works well. Uh, the biggest thing that I can say in all of this is when you have an event coming up, think about what you're going to be doing and try and do that at least several weeks in advance. You know, think about where you're going to be stationed, what you're going to be doing. Are you going to be mobile? Are you on foot? Are you NCS or a base station? And look at what you've got for equipment and figure out how you can work that in. Because each of, as we go through each of these environments, you're going to see different environments will require different equipment. Hello. Okay. There we go. Uh, why is that not changing? There we go. Now it changed. Okay. So the various three environments or um, positions that you might work. Uh, one may be on foot, often sometimes referred to as a shadow. Uh, although a shadow could be mobile, you could be riding with someone and shadowing them. But when um, these on foot and shadow, uh, in particular the on foot, this is going to be a handheld environment. And so it's a lower power uh, because it's a little hard to carry enough uh, juice to run 50 watts just on your back, uh, although there may be some people who can, but they can be, and one of the big challenges for them is the noisy environments, and we'll talk about some of the things that you can do to mitigate that. Mobile, you're in your car, you're in a car, uh, you're, it may be your car, it actually may be somebody else's car, uh, it may be a vehicle for the event, uh, it could be a police car, it could be a fire truck. Uh, I've done all of those. Uh, never been in an ambulance, though, but I have been in uh, police cars. And what you typically end up doing in those is you'll pull out and put a mobile rig in there with a mag mount and go from there. Uh, the challenge, the big, one of the biggest challenges that you'll have with mobile is you're changing terrain and uh, making, you know, being able to hit the repeaters. Now, back in Texas, that usually wasn't much of a problem because we're kind of flat. Uh, so that wasn't, that wasn't much of a problem around here, a little more of a problem. You have very changing terrain around here. You may be on one side of a mountain then on another. So you need to think about that when you're work, doing your work. And then base stations, uh, NCS, or even a, uh, a large rest stop or something like that. These can be very tricky setups, uh, because you got to consider, uh, because again, you're going to be, uh, probably not near your vehicle and actually base, it's good to consider that you won't have access to a vehicle. Uh, and again, so you may need power. What are you going to do for power? Invariably, battery power is a good thing if you can swing that. Uh, generators could be an issue. You may not have AC. And then a mast and antenna. Uh, a mag mount is not going to cut it for a base station in general because you need a ground plane for those to work. Uh, so in general, you're going to end up with a mast and some sort of antenna on that. So starting with on foot shadows, uh, your radio should have a minimum of five watts. Uh, and five watts is, is we always, uh, in all the events that I did, we always considered five watts as mandatory in order for you to work that. Uh, because you're going to end up sometimes indoors. You may end up outdoors again around here, changing terrain can cause some issues. And get an antenna that's better than a rover duck. 
These little rubber ducks over here, while they're great for in close and that sort of thing, they're not going to reach very far. So these are really kind of nice. I like these little whip antennas. They bend nicely. They, when you put the radio on your back hip or something like that, they really don't poke you. Uh, so they work very well. Uh, definitely uh, think about a dual band radio um, because you may be having to swap frequencies frequently. And if that's the case, dual band can help with that. And when I mean dual band, I mean one that can operate. Uh, you can have an A and a B side, both on VHF or both on UHF. Uh, and that's what I'm referring to as a dual band there. Uh, Pre-program all your frequencies into the radio ahead of time. You know, say a week or so before, uh, get them all uh, programmed into the radio. And what I do is I group them together. So then it's real quick to go from the next one to the, and the, go from one to the next. If you're using tactical calls, uh, for example, you may not refer to the Buck's Elbow Repeater as the Buck's Elbow Repeater. You may refer to it as the North Repeater or the East Repeater depending on your repeat, uh, your locations. So set the names, if you can, in your radios uh, to kind of help with that. It's a little catch there. And you always carry extra batteries. If you think you can get, a, get through the entire day on one set of batteries, carry two batteries. If you think it's gonna take two, carry three. Always have enough so that if something happens and you end up using the radio a lot, because that can happen, if you get really, really busy, you may need a uh, more batteries than you thought you were going to ha uh, originally have. There's nothing worse than running out of batteries during an event and going, oh, I can't participate anymore. So that will put a hole into that coverage that you were providing. As we talked about, um, foot and shadow can be very noisy. Uh, for that reason, never, ever, ever run Vox. Whether you're base, mobile, uh, on foot, never run Vox. Because as soon as you break that Vox squelch, you're, you're transmitting and you may not realize it. Or, um, and also, as a hint, people sometimes sit on their push to talk. So what happens is you're not going to hear from anybody because you're holding the repeater. And often uh, during these events, the repeater's will get rid of their timeout, uh, may take off their timeout. They may not. But even still, as soon as it comes back in, you're still going to be transmitting and nobody may be able to get in. So uh, if you haven't heard anything on the radio in the last you know, five minutes or so, just check your PTT and make sure you are not sitting on it. And then also uh, one of the best things that I found, uh, noisy environments. I'll give you an example. Uh, City of Garland had a 4th of July celebration. And invariably, you, it was noisy because it was carnival atmosphere. Uh, if you got stationed next to the fireworks, <clears throat> pardon me, if you got stationed next to the fireworks truck, uh, you're going to hear a lot of noise. <laughs> and they need to be able to talk to you. Or if you're next to one of the music venues, which I have been stationed at uh, music venues, and with uh, following around a um, the shadow, shadowing the uh, music coordinator. And that's a very tough environment to hear anything in. And the godsend that I found <clears throat> were these types of uh, headsets. Uh, they're available for just about any radio. The nice thing is that that little thing that goes in your ear is no, it's a noise uh, blocking. As a matter of fact, it blocks enough noise that it's approved for using on a gun range. So it's going to cut down the noise quite a bit. But again, I only put it in one ear and that way I can hear. And if I, if it's really, really bad and I'm trying to hear, then I'll just block my other ear with it. Uh, the other time that this setup came in handy, um, some of you may have heard of our city, the city of Garland. Uh, we, uh, Famously had a couple of terrorists try and shoot up an event and uh, one of our police officers uh, whose name was actually withheld from the public uh, did an excellent job of taking out the three terrorists and only one 
non-terrorist was injured and it was just a bullet wound that just scraped his leg. But the 4th of July event that occurred after that, the uh, city police uh, really pulled us in uh, in order to help with this event. And one of the things they wanted was us for to be kind of incognito, you know, hide the radio, hide the headset, and these hide pretty well, and people who aren't looking for them aren't going to generally notice them. And because what they wanted us to be able to do was mill among the crowd and just look for anything suspicious. So in a way, we were augmenting the police uh, uh, security there, which uh, helped them out quite a bit. Fortunately, nothing happened. Nothing really came about. I think we had one suspicious package, and that was it. And it just turned out to be a lost article. But these, uh, these noise blocking um, headsets are really, really good. And then um, be sure to, uh, and then if you're stuck in an uh, area, and this is where it comes in, you're thinking about where you're stuck. One event I was uh, working, I was doing a, 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 um, a um, rest stop, uh, and it was down in a hole. And there was no way any handheld was ever going to hit a uh, one of the repeaters it was that much down in a hole you just needed a lot more juice than what five watts could carry in a bigger antenna and it wasn't really possible to put up a base station inside the rest stop so this is where a crossband cable uh, mobile came in just set that up in my uh, car we'll talk about that a little bit more and was able to hit the repeaters but again, this comes into the uh, concept. Think about where you are. Think about what capabilities you have. And honestly, if you're given a position that you don't think you can handle, contact the, uh, because you don't have the equipment, contact the coordinator of the event and let them know and see what can be done. Mobile. Uh, generally, minimum 25 watts is uh, what I had always uh, ran with, uh, but 50 is definitely preferable. Uh, all of my rigs that I use for mobile are 50 watts or better. Uh, I think I only have one that's a 75 watt uh, it's a straight VHF, uh, but it sits in the uh, on the shelves right now. And definitely, crossband repeat is very desirable. Like I was mentioning in the previous uh, slide, having that ability to do a crossband repeat, and for those that don't quite know what that means what it is is that you'll use uh you'll set up your radio so that on you'll transmit on one frequency and the radio will or it'll receive on one frequency and it will transmit out on another and then whatever it receives on that other frequency it'll transmit on the the other freak the other frequency so and general uh this is usually a VH, one side VHF, one side UHF. Uh, this can really extend your range uh, if you have a mobile. Uh, what it also means is that you're going to need your vehicle to be able to, your vehicle radio to be able to run, uh, maybe all day. So maybe a second battery, uh, pop a second battery in and connect to that uh, is a good thing to do. Uh, it's um, You do really don't want to run down the battery in your uh, in your vehicle and jumping ahead a little bit. That's what this little device down here is all about that you see, it's called a low voltage disconnect. Uh, I have run these in, ve in vehicles and setups. What it does is that whatever battery power is coming in, you set it for a level and if it gets to a certain level, it'll automatically disconnect everything that's after it. What that does is that if you're running your mobile off of your car battery and you're kind of leaving things unattended because you're cross band repeating or you're not keeping an eye on things, what will happen is that these low voltage disconnects will uh, keep your car from uh, running down the battery so far that you won't be able to start it. So it's not any good to be at the end of the day. It's eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night. Everybody's packed up and moved out and you're ready to go and your vehicle won't start because you ran the battery down. So, uh, Definitely consider one of those. Uh, one of the things that I <clears throat> that I carry in my vehicle uh, during these events is a uh, what they call a jump pack. 
And you can get them for a few bucks off of Amazon and that sort of thing, and they'll help you jumpstart your car. But you can uh, also, like I, uh, I've done in other vehicles, install a second battery in parallel with your car battery. And that's what this uh, top little device up here is about, this ISO power. What it does is it takes, uh, takes power from your vehicle. It takes power from the battery, the second battery. It will charge the battery uh, from the vehicle while it's running. If it sees the uh, alternator is not running, and the way it senses that is that your alternator will put out so much voltage, but once you kill the alternator, it will drop below uh, 13 volts pretty quick. And as soon as it sees that limit or whatever it's set to, it'll disconnect uh, from the vehicle battery. Again, saving your vehicle so you can start. And then there's your output. <clears throat> Noise is usually not too much of a problem in your mobile. Uh, you can roll up the windows and hear pretty good. So uh, need for noise canceling or noise blocking headsets usually isn't much of a problem there. And again, as with all things in amateur radio, big antenna, <laughs> the bigger the better, uh, mm -hmm. especially around here dealing with the changing terrain. Uh, I think I run a, uh, for events, I'll run a 5 8 uh, wavelength. Uh, I run a, I think it's about 60 inches tall, uh, whip for my VHF, UHF on a mobile. And it's always had good, uh, good, um, good reach. And by the way, if anybody has any questions, feel free at any time to pipe up. The road hazard kit. Excuse me? The road hazard kit, what is that? Oh, road hazard kit, yes, thank you. Uh, consider having a road hazard system in your car, meaning that if you break down or you end up having to block something in the road for an event uh, because there's a hazard, have a, a road hazard system in the car, more than just the car flashers, something that you can set back from the vehicle, you know, like those little folding triangles that you'll see truckers put out just to warn other vehicles uh, that, you know, you're stopped on the side of the road. It's a safety item. And also along those lines, um, bringing it up, uh, consider getting those uh, magnetic signs uh, that you can plate on the side or back of your vehicle, let's say emergency communications or amateur radio emergency services. People do respect those. Um, uh, running around with those on the vehicle, I found that people you know, if you're running with your flashers and you have emergency communications on the back of it, like during the bike events or any other event, people don't seem to get as testy when you're going slow behind you. So those signs kind of help and it lets others know, you know, non-participants in the uh, event that, you know, something's up here. Uh, take a look and keep your eyes open. So it also gives a little bit of a safety margin, like for bikers or if you're dealing with uh, walks or something like that. So base stations, uh, example, NCS, net control stations. These are probably uh, from an equipment wise among the most challenging to deal with. Uh, you're gonna need a power source. Noise can be an issue because you could be stuck in a base station area like a rest stop or a, or like what we had with the, um, with, with the uh, ALS, it, 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 at times it got a little noisy out there. A lot of people chattering away. Uh, so noise can intrude your antenna. Um, you may not be able to get to your vehicle. Uh, your vehicle may have to be parked way far away. So you're going to need a way to put up an antenna. And then of course, cables. Um, you know, you've got to run power, you know, where your power is coming from, where your uh, antenna is going to, all of that can be an issue. And then of course the environment can become an issue. Uh, it could be rain, it could be snow, it could be sun, it could be wind, lots of things to consider. So for power, as I mentioned, you may not get AC power. Uh, you may be off to the side where you know, the nearest power may be four or 500 feet away. And they may not want you to run a generator because it's too noisy. It's, uh, it, it'll get in the way. So, or for safety reasons, they may not want you running a generator. So 
really do consider battery uh, for this. And what I have found in my experience is that LifePo is a very good choice for this. Uh, the nice thing with LifePo's is that their voltage stays very, very constant until it gets to the end of its capability and then it falls off like a cliff. Um, and for that reason, um, battery monitors are worthwhile. They're not hard, they're not that expensive. I mean, this is not an expensive item that power works. This one down here from Victron is a lot more money, but I had, I've used this, uh, actually had it left over from an RV project. So I've repurposed that and I'll show you where I did that and to it. Uh, and the nice thing about it, and they both do the same thing. They keep track of how many amp hours you've pulled out of your battery or how much you've pull, put in during a charge. So that way you can um, watch the battery. And if you know you've got a 20 amp hour battery and you're sitting at a 19 hour amp hour draw in a matter of four hours and you've got another three to go, you're probably not gonna make it. But that being said, the reason I said 20 amp hour is that in the experiences that I've done as NCS, uh, the max draw I've ever pulled out of a radio, and this was a radio that was running 50 watts all day long for eight hours, the max I've ever pulled out is 10 amp hours. So what that tells me is if I put in a 20 amp hour battery for a system, I've got 16 hours more than likely. Now, that may be temperature dependent, so keep that in mind, but I think 20 amp hours in general will give you a good uh, be, uh, working uh, battery for a, uh, for a life bow. And the other nice thing over them versus lead is they're a third of the weight. So they're a lot easier to haul around. Antenna. You need to get as high as you can um, with the antennas. Uh, and definitely use a base station style antenna. It's a little hard to use a mobile type antenna on top of a mast without providing it some sort of ground plane. So stick with a uh, base station style antenna. This one I think that I'm showing here is only about 36 inches high and does very well. Uh, John has used it, I've used it in events and it works really, it works well. And then <clears throat> for a mast, you're gonna need a mast, something to put it up on. Now I've used tip over masts where you have a base and some poles and it just lays down, you attach the antenna and then you tip it up. Um, a little bit expensive, but John had this absolutely wonderful system that I really like. And if you don't know what a bull float is, what a bull float is, is it's a device that's put on the end of a pole, hence bull float poles, used to smooth concrete. So you've seen these guys probably on TV or out there on construction sites where they have these 15 foot long poles or longer and they're just putting them out on the concrete and pulling them around. Well, these are not horribly expensive and they're, a cup, uh, they're about an inch and a half in diameter. Uh, you can get them from Lowe's and they come in five foot sections. So they're easy and nice and transportable and uh, it's easy to build a little base anchor. John had a little uh, tip over pivot uh, anchor that looked like it was uh, maybe originally designed for a flagpole, uh, but it was uh, absolute brilliance and it worked great. And he could easily get oh, up. Joe, I'll, I'll, throw, I'll, I'll throw in that, that, uh, that, the, that actually that bracket is a bowl float bracket. I just detached oh. it. John, am I the only one, or did Joe fade away? No, no, he, I, he's. Uh, I'm still hearing him, so I think it's you. Back to you, Joe. Okay, so there's the bull, bull float bracket, the part that goes between the pole and the uh, bull float, and he just attached it to a plank, and uh, we he was using. Uh, we were using a vehicle uh, for uh, holding down the plank. And that brings us to the next thing. You've got to consider what happens when you don't have a vehicle around to help support it. So you may have to, again, know your environment ahead of time. Maybe you can attach the mast 
to a, um, a canopy that has straight legs. Uh, maybe there is a plate, maybe you can use the same sort of mechanism that you might with a uh, vehicle, except maybe find a way to get some heavy weights on that plank, you know, a good couple hundred pounds of weights and uh, figure out a way, or you may end up having to guy it. But you need to think about and prepare for these different environments that you're going to run into. And that's what it all comes down to, is just being prepared for different environments. So again, as we're talking about the environmental, uh, noise. Uh, this is an environment where noise, uh, noise canceling headsets would work very well. Because usually with a base station, you're not running around or doing a whole lot. So you don't have to worry about the, uh, or you're not doing a whole lot. <laughs> Didn't mean to say that NCS doesn't do a whole lot. What I mean is that you're not generally having to move from place to place. Uh, and often you're not having to hear other people at the same time. Uh, so a noise canceling headset can actually work very well there. Um, and again, the environment. Is it gonna rain? Is it gonna snow? Is it gonna be sunny? Uh, are you going to possibly have thunderstorms? Think about that and you're set up in teardown. Uh, it's no fun to deal with an antenna while there's a thunderstorm going on and it's probably not the safest thing in the world to mess with. Uh, and you don't want to be doing that during a thunderstorm. So keep an eye out on your environment. Um, have a weather radio uh, or a lot of these uh, base station radios, a lot of radios, even the handhelds, have the ability to pick up the weather channel. So keep an eye out for the weather if it's looking like it's a possibility for bad weather. Cables, uh, minimize your cables. Uh, set up your environment in such a way in your equipment so that you can minimize the number of cables that are on the desk or on the ground and because they become trip hazards. And be sure if they, um, public is going to be around and might walk by uh, some of the cables, make sure that they are well marked so that they don't trip over them and yank them out of your radio or worse, they fall and get hurt. Uh, we don't want that. So definitely, so one of the things I've always worked towards is to minimize the number of cables that are sitting on the desk. And after spending years doing this, this is what I finally came up with. <laughs> for doing exactly that. This is a, um, a portable uh, 3U, uh, for those that don't know what a U is, there is a standard unit of measure for rack mounted equipment and it's 1.75 inches. So this is 3U, so three times 1.75, 5.5 and a quarter inches tall on the inside. It has covers, it's easily portable. Um, I originally started out with this faceplate that holds the radio speaker and microphone as a homemade thing. Um, eventually, after I got tired of that, I uh, ha had somebody make this. Uh, that puts the cost up a little bit, but making it yourself is not hard. Uh, Dremel tool works real well on that material. Uh, most, a lot of times it's aluminum, so it cuts real easy. Uh, you can paint it and make it look nice. And uh, so the front part has the radio mounted. Uh, and this is the business end of it. So also within contained inside this, uh, this unit is my battery. So I have a battery charger that sits out here, it can take power from a power supply. And if there is an external power supply feeding things, that will run everything as opposed to the battery. Then it can also take a solar panel for charging. So that works well. Uh, I put in a little uh, uh, rig runner here and I chose one specifically that would give me five volt output to charge my cell phone at the same time. So that works well. Um, this little uh, knob over here is what's called a battery disconnect. What it will do is it'll disconnect the battery from the system. The only thing that will remain connected is the battery monitor. Uh, it draws very, very little power. And that is just useful for, because when I flip that on, one of the things that does happen is that this 
internal fan will kick on to help pull air out and keep things cool. So this whole thing sits up on a table. It has one connection to the outside world that is needed for a whole day. And that's to the antenna. And that's it. That's all this thing needs. You just drop it up on there and done. And uh, some of you may have noticed this little sticker here. What I did is I, uh, I tested the battery to see how much uh, juice I can pull out of it. When I bought my 20 amp hour battery from Biennio, they made a mistake. They sent me a 60 amp hour battery instead, which is three times the cost. But they were uh, kind enough to let me keep it. So when I ran the test on it, I could pull a total of 65 amp hours out of it. And that was a starting voltage of 13.3. And then I called the end at 11.4. In reality, a life PO will be a 12 volt life PO is considered dead is dead at I think 10 volts, but 10 volts is not good enough to run your radios. It's way too low for most radios. And a lot of them won't, a lot of them won't even power up. So um, this is just so that I can keep track of uh, the battery's life and history. So again, let's see, I think I've been over this. Oh, one other thing that I do have on here with that particular radio is that it has a built-in Bluetooth. So I can use a Bluetooth headset uh, for my, um, for my communications rather than having to plug in uh, for it. And let's see, anything else? No, I think we've covered everything on, that's on there. And then this is where I started with it originally. These were the components outside of the, uh, the chassis that you saw, uh, which I think was about 150 bucks off of Amazon. Uh, I started with basically these three different components. This was the front panel. And all I did was cut the holes in it with a Dremel tool and uh, took a little uh, and then devised a way, just some metal brackets to mount the front panel. Uh, this is actually a steel piece, but with a Dremel cutting wheel, it went pretty easy. Drilled it and mounted um, the, there's a mag magnetic mount for the, uh, for the uh, microphone. Uh, you can see it right here. This is just a the, behind the microphone. There's a, a magnet that just sticks onto the surface. So it'll hold it there in place. And uh, just got a little three U tray with lots of little holes in it. And I, that makes it nice for, I don't have to drill many holes in it. I can strap things down to it. And then on the back, what I did is I got three of these uh, ventilated panels uh, and the nice thing was all those things like the rig runners and all that sort of thing just kind of lined up on the holes nicely. I didn't have to drill any holes or anything like that. Just bolted it in and we were done. I had to cut some holes for things to pass through. Uh, actually, I think I only used two of these in the uh, beginning and just passed all the cables underneath where the third one would have gone, but it worked great. And uh, I had to do some uh, cutting for the, uh, for the flange mounted uh, UHF connector. And that's just a pass through uh, UHF flange mount. So there's UHF on both sides. So there's a little short jumper cable inside that uh, takes it from the radio to the outside. And it always went really in real easy. One note on this uh, panel here, this uh, front panel, get the ones that are flat. Um, uh, don't get the, what they call the flanged ones. What the flanged ones do is that they'll take the, uh, they'll bend over part of the metal and it'll still be that 3U in height, but it'll, when it was manufactured, it was a little taller than that. They bend it back and that makes it very stiff. Problem with that is when you try and mount it in front of this tray, it won't fit. So just get the flat one. It'll be stiff enough once you've put in the radio head and uh, bolted it down. And then these uh, ventilated ones, they always come uh, flanged, but that didn't run into any issues for me and uh, worked great. So I think that's about all I have. Any uh, questions?
So either I was clear or I bored everyone. <laughs> Joe, I'll give you one more vid video visual aid. This is the that um, uh, mount where you put the wheel with the car here oh. to hold it, and then this supports that bull float pole. And this just is the and the bull float. Uh, uh, I took the this off and you can just tighten it down in a different position or, or whatever to deal with uh, things that aren't, aren't straight. But anyway, it, uh, yeah. it, it is something that you can get at Lowe's instead of yeah. having to go to Amazon. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's easy. I mean, uh, like I said, John, the, 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 um, the, that was brilliant. I mean, I thought about painter's poles, but they were always so thin and flimsy, whereas these bull float poles an inch and a half in diameter or so so yeah, no they the yeah and that's the critical thing is that thin poles tend to be floppy right bigger round poles tend to be stiffer there's a reason that uh that all these uh light poles you see are big around and not just just thin things yeah and it like i said it, it, it was absolute brilliance uh i i i thought it was oh, an, easy oh, to transport oh, made out better aluminum too is the fiberglass or aluminum, uh, uh, Joe? Yes, they're aluminum. The bull float poles are aluminum, it's so they're lightweight. Aluminum. Wonderful to know that. Yeah, uh, John had, like I said, John had a real stroke of brilliance there, and easy to transport. They're about five feet in length each, and just go in the back of your car. Yeah, the 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 one thing I will tell you is wonderful for temporary installation not really a good idea out in the rain year after year this is no. they, they don't weather very well they do uh i had one in a salt water environment and they ate it up in about nine months <laughs> yeah they're designed to be taken out and taken apart and hosed off at the end of each day uh when they're in use for their real per for their in original intended purpose of uh smoothing concrete now what range or heights do y'all go with it will vary uh let's see i think john has been up 15 feet uh when i've done mine i've been up um what about 25 24 feet uh with the tip up that i have uh i've been up that high and then of course the antenna is at the very top of that and that around here that has worked well for the events that we've had I can tell you when we did the uh, Rockbridge gravel grinder off of the antenna that I had. Now I also had a 17 foot UHF VHF antenna on top of that. So it had some height to it. We were able to reach, what was the town, that town's name? Brownsville, Brownsburg, which was a little ways away and kind of a little bit over the hill uh, in the elevation um, same, um, uh, simplex. We were able to hit them simplex. So it, it was doing very well. And that was at that event, we were using a vehicle to hold the, uh, the plates down. Uh, at, the, uh, at the ALS, uh, we got lucky in that they allowed us to park the vehicle, a vehicle right next to the, uh, the NCS base station. If that hadn't worked, uh, we were going to go someplace else until, uh, <laughs> found out we couldn't go there because that's where the ambulances were going to park. <laughs> and they were, no, did you, did, are you using LMR 400? I don't remember. Or did you have hard line? No, uh, we were using 240. I'm using 240. It works fine. Well, see. It was good enough. Yeah, it's good enough. Because the height uh, was more important than the loss in the coax. Right. If uh, if we were if I was having to run longer distances, I would definitely come out with LMR four hundred instead. But since our we were well under a hundred feet on mm -hmm. the uh, the run for the coax, so uh, in those cases. Uh, 240 and 400 isn't going to notice much difference. Any other questions?
Yeah, it all it all to helps out that you're running a more powerful radio. Also, if you're trying if you're trying to push that with an HT with five watts, uh, you've got trouble. And um, and for these events, also, you know, if uh, you have a long line, and and doing events again, not only plan for yourself, but if you have extra equipment, uh, you never know what's going to go wrong. Somebody's HT may die, and then. If there isn't a spare around that they can use, then they become a hole in your coverage. Uh, that becomes a hole in your coverage, and you're going to have to figure that out. So if you have extra equipment, bring it. And just be prepared to uh, think on your feet and improvise and adapt. Uh, that's the name of the game here. Uh, it's not only the Marines that improvise and adapt to overcome, but also ham radio operators. We do that very well. Uh, since we're all pretty much self, or the concept is we're each pretty much self-sufficient. So we can put things together and get things working. That's what makes these events fun is uh, when you get these That's challenges. Like I think John's trying to share something. Ah, I'm just uh, sharing. A, a, a... So there's there's Joe. Yep. Uh, well, I don't know if you can see what I'm pointing at, but but there there you can see two masks hooked up under that truck, under the wheels of that truck supporting them, and then the shelter, and then then the radios are are there. And I may have lost you completely because I think I probably froze. Oh, you're back. You're fine. You're good, John. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I just uh, thought I'd, I'd, I'd throw a photo in there. Well, excellent presentations tonight. Thank you. John, before 